Today we're learning how to frame a hip roof using a framing square and a calculator. Hip roofs like our mock-up here today are made up of common rafters, hip rafters, and jack rafters. In order to frame a hip roof, you must have already calculated and installed your common rafters. Now because I've already done two videos on how to lay out and cut common rafters, which I'll link below, I'm not going to get into too much detail in this video. However, I will give you a quick overview demonstrating yet a faster way to calculate common rafters. When using a construction calculator to solve for common rafters, you only need two numbers, the run and the pitch. The run is half the distance of the total span minus half the thickness of the ridge material. For example, this mock-up has a total span of four feet, which is measured from its outside edges. So half of that is 24 inches. The ridge is an inch and a half wide, so half of that would be three quarters of an inch. Therefore, 24 minus three quarters leaves us with a run of 23 and a quarter. Pitch is how much the roof rises per 12 inches of run. For example, for every 12 inches of horizontal run, our roof rises 6 inches. This number is completely dependent on personal preference, codes, or specified by a designer. On the calculator, type 23 and 1 quarter inch and press the run button. Then type 6 inches and then the pitch button followed by the diagonal button for a measurement of 26 inches. 26 inches is the rafter's diagonal measurement, which is from this tip here down to the black line, and it does not include the overhang. So let's go over and do some layout to figure this all out. The majority of our layout will be done today using the framing square that's actually attached to a piece of wood with some simple clamps. What this will do is allow the square to move freely and accurately over the lumber. To set up for a common rafter, line up the six mark on the tongue side with the edge of your wood. This represents the pitch or rise. Then line up the 12 inch mark with the other side and clamp it in place. Again, this represents our run. Now slide the square up to the top of the rafter, trace the tongue angle and cut the angle with a saw. From there, measure down from the top of the rafter, 26 inches, make a mark and draw a second line. So far we've laid out this part right here and now we need to lay out and cut for the bird's mouth, the soffit and the fascia cut. The C cut for the bird's mouth is to the right of this line and it's four inches long for this mock-up. So line up the four and draw a line and that gets cut out. Next is the overhang which is five inches from this line. So line the tongue back up, measure over five, make a mark and draw another line. The last line to mark is the soffit cut which forms the four inch fascia. Measure down four inches, make a mark and then draw a line and this all gets cut out. Once everything is cut out, you now have a finished common rafter. Because we're focusing mainly on building a hip roof today, we're actually going to use this common rafter that we just cut to start forming today's hip roof. Once installed here, the common rafter becomes known as a king common rafter or just king rafter. And it gets lined up with the ridge at the top and on the center line down on the plate. And you may be wondering, how do you know where the common roof ends and the hip roof starts? Well, it's actually pretty simple. The hip roof starts 23 and a quarter inches back from the edge of the building, which is exactly our run. Moving on, let's start working on the hip rafters, which go from the bottom corner here all the way up to the ridge. If we look back at our calculator, you can see that it's still showing our common rafter length of 26 inches. From there, all you have to do to find the length of the hip rafter is to push the hip and valley button for a total length of 34 and 7 eighths. Again, this measurement does not include the overhang, so we'll need to add that just like we did for the common rafter. There's one more number that we need to figure out before we clear the calculator out, and that is the jack rafter lengths. Still on the screen is 34 and 7 eighths, and all we have to do to find the first jack is to hit the jack button until you see jack number one, which for us is eight and an eighth. If you hit the button another time, you can see that jack two is zero inches. And it's zero because our roof is so small 
that there's no other jacks needed. If you had a larger roof, you would just continue to hit the button and cycle through all the jack rafters needed for your roof. Because hip rafters are at a 45 degree angle to the ridge board, they rise slower or more gradually than the common rafter would. Therefore, we need to account for this by changing the run of our square from 12 inches to 17 inches. Just make sure that when you make that adjustment, to double check that the tongue measurement of 6 inches is still right on. The other thing to note before we begin layout is that hip rafters along with ridge boards are generally one size larger than the rafters themselves. So for our example back here we're using 2x6 rafters so the ridge and the hips are 2x8s. Alright with the framing square set to 6 and 17 mark out the top cut by drawing a line and this time adding two more lines three quarters of an inch to the right and to the left. We will use these additional lines as guides to make our double bevel cut at the top of the rafter. If we look back at the two rafters in our mock-up, you will see that the hip rafter has to be pointed in order to fit tightly into that space. With a saw bevel to 45 degrees, cut the right line first, which is the waist side, and then cut the other side. When you're done, your cut should look like this. From there, take your tape measure and hook it over the point and measure down the rafter length, which is 34 and 7 eighths, make a mark, and draw another line. On common rafters, the seat cut, which is this part here, is generally the same thickness of the exterior wall. In this case, it's 4 inches. However, we can't use that same seat cut measurement for our hip rafters, but what we can use is the height above plate. Height above plate is this measurement right here. It's a straight line that goes right up to the edge of the rafter. And in our case, it's 4 and a 16th. If we now go back to our layout, we can measure down 4 and a 16th, make a mark, and draw the seat cut. Now we're not quite done with the seat cut yet, because if we were to cut that line right here, the rafter would fit, but it would be too high. Again, because the rafter is coming in at a 45 degree angle, it needs to sit down or be dropped so that the rafter edges meet like this. The amount of rafter drop is based on half the thickness of the hip material. So in this case, it's 3 quarters of an inch. Back at the layout, measure to the right of this line 3 quarters of an inch and make a short mark. Then remeasure down our 4 and 1 16th, which is our height above plate, and make another mark. The distance between these two lines is the amount of rafter drop needed for this roof. All you have to do then is slide the square up to that new line and draw a new seat cut. Next up is the overhang amount. Because this is a hip rafter, we can't simply measure out 5 like we did with a common rafter. Rather, we need to figure out how far down the slope we need to go in order to locate the correct amount of overhang. I know that's a little confusing, so let me draw a picture. What we're trying to figure out is how far down the slope we need to go to get the correct amount of overhang, so we don't know this number. However, we do know the other two numbers in this equation, and that is the overhang amount of the common rafter, which is 5 inches, and the pitch of our roof is 6 inches. Therefore, on the calculator, type 5 inch run, 6 inch pitch, and because this is a hip rafter and not a common rafter, we're going to hit the hip and valley button for a total of 7.5 inches. If we go back to our layout, we can measure down now 7.5 inches, make a mark, and draw our overhang. Again, because this is a hip rafter, this cut needs to have a double bevel cut just like at the top. So like before, we're going to measure 3 quarters of an inch on either side and draw two lines. Remember, once both lines are cut at a 45 degree bevel, the center line will end up being the tip of those two bevels. The last thing to lay out would be the soffit cut, and in order to do that, we need to first extend our C cut line over to meet the overhang or fascia cut line. And now it's back to the common rafter to measure the distance between the seat cut and the soffit, which is 2 and 5 eighths. Transfer that measurement down from our extended seat cut line, make a mark, and draw the soffit cut line. Again, there's a lot of lines here, so let me darken them so you can see more clearly. First, we're cutting the fascia. The heel cut and the seat cut 
which makes up the bird's mouth, and then we're cutting the soffit. But remember that the center fascia line is cut using two 45 degree bevels, cutting the waist side first and then the other side. Be careful to position your material safely as you work through making each cut. With the hip now cut, it's a good idea to lay out the 45 degree angle for the rafter so you know exactly where it fits. Once installed, double check it's fitting tight to the exterior and the top corners of the hip are lined up with the other king rafters. Because this hip fits, use it as a pattern to cut out the remaining hip and install it. The last thing to do is lay out and cut our jack rafters. Because this roof is laid out 16 inches on center, let's pull a tape from the left side of this king rafter, measure over 16 inches, draw a line, and mark an X where the rafter gets installed. Because this roof is so small, it only needs one jack rafter, and if you remember, the length of that rafter is eight and an eighth. Now there's one thing to note about the Construction Pro calculator and that it doesn't take into account the thickness of the hip when calculating the jack rafters. Therefore, because our hip is an inch and a half thick, we have to add 7 sixteenths to the overall length of the jack rafters in order to get them to land exactly 16 on center. So all we have to do is simply add 7 sixteenths to our 8 and an eighth to get a total jack rafter length of 8 9 sixteenths. To lay out the jack rafters, you have to put your square back to a 6 12. Again, because we're not cutting hips anymore. Jack rafters also have 45 degree bevels at the top and a common rafter seat cut and tail assembly. Therefore, you can lay these out individually if you want or you can make a copy of the common rafter tail simply by tracing it out and using it as a pattern. It starts by laying out the top angle set to your 6 and 12. Set the saw at a 45 degree bevel and make your cut. Measure down from the long point of that bevel 8 and 9 sixteenths and draw another line. From there, line up your pattern, trace it out, and make the cuts. Now because some of the jack rafters are on the opposite side of the hip, you'll have to make mirrored copies so that the 45 degree angles are going in the right direction. To do that, simply lay one jack down with the long point facing down and trace the whole jack out. And now when you cut this new jack, just make sure that you're cutting with the saw beveled in the opposite direction so that you're making a mirrored copy. With everything cut, install the remaining jacks to finish the roof. As a reminder, this is just a mock-up roof, so you need to make sure to check with all of your local building codes so you can find the correct ways to attach and size all the framing members. Now we went over a lot of information really quickly, so I've broken down this video into chapters so you can go back and do each step easily. So if you have any questions, hit me up in the comment section below. You can find me on Instagram, that always works as well. Thank you so much for watching today. See you in the next video.